Hey there, Mr. Weaver here, and this is 8th grade, module 3, lesson 3, solve multi-step equations. After this lesson, you need to be able to solve multi-step linear equations with rational coefficients by using the distributive property and combining like terms. Let's learn. Solve multi-step equations. Some equations contain expressions with grouping symbols on one or both sides of the equal sign. To solve equations like this, first we're going to expand the expressions that contain the grouping symbols, so our parentheses. Then we're going to solve the equation combining any like terms and using our distributive property and other properties of equality along the way. So here's an example. We start off with negative 5 times the quantity 2x plus 3, then take away an x. That's equal to 4 times the quantity x plus 11 with another one added. So to solve this, we see those grouping symbols. First, we want to get rid of them. We have to use the distributive property and take what's in the group and multiply by how many times it tells us out front. So I had 2x plus 3 five times, which is 10x and 15, and then the negative would make it the opposite sign, so negative 10x minus 15. Then even before we look at the other side, I see there's multiple x's on the left side. I'm going to combine those together. I had negative 10 and then another negative 1x, so altogether I have negative 11x's. Then I'm going to do the same thing to get rid of the grouping symbols on the other side, 4x plus 44. Once I've cleared my parentheses, I'm going to use those properties of equality to add or subtract and do the opposite to both sides. So here adding 11x to both sides, that gets rid of the variable term off of the left. Then I would subtract 45 from both sides to get the constant term off the right. Finally, since I had 15x equals negative 60, I would need to divide by that coefficient 15, and I would find my value of x. So all through this, the solution here is x equals negative 4, and I'm just using the same properties of equality that we have learned in previous lessons, but now with the distributive property to get rid of those parentheses. Example 1, solve multi-step equations. Solve 3 times the quantity 8x plus 12, take away 15x, is equal to 2 times the quantity 3 minus 3x. Check your solution. So first we've written our equation. We see grouping symbols, our parentheses here. We are going to get rid of them using the distributive property. So we're going to take what's out front and show that this group was there three times. So if I had three groups of 8, I would have 24x. And if I had three groups of 12, I would have 36. Doing the same on the other side to get rid of the other set of parentheses, I have two groups of this. So if I had two threes, that would be six. If I had two of the minus three x's, that would be minus six x's. On the left side, I can see I have two places where there's an x. So 24x minus 15x would give me 9x. I still have that 36. And then the right side has not changed yet. Next. I have a variable on both sides. I'm going to do the opposite of that to both sides using whatever property of equality. Here it's the addition property since I need to add 6x to both sides. Cancels out there. 9x plus 6x is 15x. Bring down everything we didn't use. 15x plus 36 equals 6. Now we're down to a two-step equation. I'm going to subtract 36 from both sides. We made 0 with it on the left. 6 minus 36 is negative 30. Finally, dividing both sides by 15, since the coefficient in front of the variable was 15. 15 divided by 15 is 1. Negative 30 divided by 15 ends up being negative 2. So the solution to this equation would be x equals negative 2. Again, we got rid of the parentheses first using the distributive property. Then we used our properties of equality to eliminate the variable from one side. And the same thing from the constant on the other side and we went through and solved for our variable. Now that we have our solution, we should always double check. So we got negative 2. Let's put that in every place there's an x. Here there's three places where there's an x, so we should have three substitutions of negative 2. And notice here in the original it's the curved parentheses. Here we changed it to brackets since we're going to put what we substituted in parentheses as well. They mean the same thing. So let's calculate it out. 8 times negative 2 is negative 16, plus 12 is negative 4, then times 3 is negative 12. In the middle, we have 15 times 2, which is 30, 
we're subtracting it and it was negative. And on the right side, we have three times negative two, which is negative six, and we're subtracting it. So three minus negative six, three plus six is nine, then times two. All of this showing we would get 18 is equal to 18. When we plugged in what we got for our solution of negative two, we ended up with a true statement at the end, which helps us show that we did it correctly. Check your understanding. Solve the given equation for the variable. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have found x to be equal to negative 29. Let's see how to get that. First, I'm going to distribute 8 to the negative 2 and 8 to the x. So I have negative 16. And then with the 8 and the x, I would end up with plus 8x. Still have that minus 3x at the end there. And on the right side, I didn't have any parentheses, so it's already expanded out. Let's combine like terms. I see both of these here are x terms. So 8x minus 3x is 5x. Bring down what we didn't use. If I subtract 5x from both sides, the left side goes to 0. 6x minus 5x is just 1x. So if I subtract that 5x, I'm already left with positive x by itself. I just need to undo my constant from the right, which I would subtract 13, and I'm already left with x without even having to divide. So negative 16 minus 13 ends up being negative 29 equals x, and we can switch it around so it looks like our answer, x equals negative 29. Example two, solve multi-step equations. Solve 3 tenths times the quantity, 10 minus 5x equals 31 and a half minus the quantity 8x plus 9. So just as before, we're going to use the distributive property to get rid of our parentheses. 3 tenths times 10 is 3. 3 tenths times 5 ends up being 1.5. 3 times 5 is 15 with one decimal place, so 1.5, and it was subtracting. We didn't do anything on the right side yet, even though there's parentheses there. Next, in order to undo this and kind of use combining like terms with a plus here, what we're going to do is take this negative, which is really a negative 1, and distribute it to both terms. So it's the opposite of this group, which is how we end up with plus negative 8x and then minus 9. So if you see a negative out front and there's no number, really you're just going to change the signs of both things inside the parentheses. Now we can combine. We have 31.5 plus negative 9, so 31.5 minus 9 ends up being 22 and a half. Next, we can start solving for our variable. So here they're subtracting our constant term first rather than the variable. The order of doing that doesn't necessarily matter as long as you get the variable on one side and the constant on the other. After subtracting 3 from both sides, I would be left with negative 1.5x on the left, 19.5 on the right with that minus 8. And then I would add 8x to both sides to cancel it off the right side. Negative one and a half plus eight is six and a half with the x. Last, I'm dividing by that coefficient in front of our variable, so dividing both sides by 6.5. 6.5 by 6.5 is one, so I'm left with my one x. 19.5 divided by 6.5 is three. After beginning with this complicated looking equation, we ended up with a solution of just three. Again, we need to check our solution by substituting what we got in for our variable. So 3 in for x, and we'll calculate it out. 5 times 3 is 15. 10 minus 15, negative 5. 3 times 5 is 15. It's negative, and there's one decimal, so negative 1.5. Let's check to see if the right side equals that same thing. 8 times 3 is 24. Plus 9 is 33. 31.5 minus 33 also is negative 1.5. We got the same thing, it's a true statement, our solution must be correct. Check your understanding, solve the given equation for the variable. Pause the video now and complete this check. Check your answer. You should have found x to be equal to 2 tenths, or 0 0.2. If you put it as a fraction for some reason, it would be the same as 1 fifth. Let's see how to get that. So first, I have this negative one that I'm really distributing. So 
when I rewrite this, I'm going to show that I'm changing the sign to the opposite. So negative 1 times 7 ends up being negative 7 with the x. And the opposite of positive 20 is negative 20. That's equal to 0 0.5. This is half. Half of 6 is 3 with the x. Half of 14 is 7. And it was subtracting. There's no negative out front, so it's the same, not the opposite. Let's combine like terms. I have positive 15 minus 20, so that would end up being negative 5. I have negative 7x, take away 5, equals 3x, take away 7. I'm going to add 7x to both sides. That way, when I'm dealing with over here, I end up with positive 10x. Because my variable ends up on the right, I have to get rid of this constant over here by adding 7. Negative 5 plus 7 ends up being positive 2. Last, I'm going to divide by 10. Divide by 10. 2 divided by 10 is 0 0.2. So that is what's equal to x, which is what we got. Or, as I said before, if you have 2 tenths, also equal to 1 fifth if you just reduce that fraction. Example 3. Solve multi-step equations. Solve half of the quantity 6x minus 4 plus 6x equals negative 12 times the quantity 1 sixth x plus 2. Check your solution. If we have to distribute out a fraction, which we do here, or if we end up multiplying by a fraction, remember, fractions are just division, and when you're multiplying by a fraction, really you're just multiplying by the numerator, which was the top number, and then dividing by the denominator or the bottom number. So if I'm doing half times 6, I could do 1 times 6 is 6, divided by 2 is 3. So this would be 3. Same with over here, 1 times 4 is 4, divided by 2 is 2. I end up with 3x minus 2. And then I still have that plus 6x at the end. Then before moving to the other side, let's just combine like terms. 3x plus 6x is 9x. Now let's distribute this 12. So 12 times 1 is 12, divided by 6 is 2. It's negative, so it would be negative 2 with the x. And then 12 times 2 is 24. It was the opposite, so negative 24. Here we kept the plus sign and showed that it was negative. But if you look at the next part where we combine like terms, when you're adding a negative, it's the same as subtracting. So here we can also write it as negative 2x minus 24. Now let's isolate our variable. So adding 2x to both sides cancels it off of the right. 9x plus 2x is 11x. Then if we add 2 to the left, it cancels it out. So let's add 2 to the right. Negative 24 plus 2 is negative 22. Last, let's divide by our coefficient. So divide by 11. Negative 22 divided by 11 is negative 2. So again, we had a complicated looking equation to begin with. And our solution ended up being negative 2. Now, with all the examples, we might end up with an integer solution, such as we had before with 3 or negative 2. Or we might end up with a decimal or fraction answer, as we saw in the last check. So just because you get a fraction or decimal answer does not mean you are wrong. That's where we would go in and check to see what we got by plugging it in and making sure that we come out with a true equation. Check your understanding. Solve this equation for the given variable. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have found x was equal to negative 9. Let's look at how to get that. First, if I'm distributing this out, multiplying, I get 3 times negative 5, which is negative 15. I'm just going to write this right here for now before I move it over. And then divide by 4. 15 divided by 4 does not come out perfectly, but it's honestly not too complicated. I can take 4 from 15 3 times with 3 fourths left over, so it would just be 3.75 and it would be negative. 3 fourths times 8 does come out nicely, and for this I want to show you, you don't always have to multiply by the top first and then divide by the bottom. You could divide by the bottom first, then multiply by the top. 8 divided by 4 is 2, times 3 is 6. And then it was subtracting, so I'm going to keep it subtracting. If I multiplied first, I'd get 24 divided by 4, it's still 6. But sometimes it's easier to divide by the bottom first. It makes your numbers smaller, especially if you end up trying to do this with larger numbers. On the other side, distributing, I would just have negative 6x. 
and negative 6 times positive 4 is negative 24. And here I would have 1 fourth x. I'm just going to change that to 0.25 since on the other side I ended up with 3.75. Oh, good thing I caught it. I forgot my x value here when I distributed 3 fourths times negative 5. I would have hopefully noticed in a little bit, but it's always good to double check as you're going. So let's combine like terms. I have negative 6 plus 0 0.25. Those combined together would end up being negative 5.75 with my x and then minus 24. If I had lost $6 and then found a quarter, I would still be out $5.75. That's how I know quickly in my head it's negative 5.75. Bring down the rest on the other side. This one is smaller, so I'm going to do the opposite of that. It's a larger negative, so it's smaller. I'm going to add 5.75 to both sides. When I do that, adding a negative, same as subtracting. So in my head, I'm going to swing this up top and subtract. 75 cents minus 75 cents is no cents. 5 minus 3 is 2. So really, I just ended up with 2x minus 6 equals negative 24. That's what was left over here when I did the opposite of that. Add 6 to both sides. Negative 24 going up 6 puts me at negative 18. Bring down the 2x. That's what's left. 2x equals negative 18, so divide by 2. x is equal to negative 9, which is what we got. And we should be double checking again by plugging in negative 9 in for x and double checking that every time we plug in negative 9, we do end up with a true statement. If we were to go through it, we would find that it does in fact come out to be a true statement. 